What's good, YouTube is Jay here. Um, Thunder Dragons. This is my first time ever actually playing this deck. Uh, consistently, I didn't play the deck IRL for the most part. So, you know, I'm still a little bit noobish uh, to it, but I wanted to try something a little bit different from the branded Despia plays. Uh, just because I feel like this deck, at least from my experience with it so far, it has a lot of funny and fun shenanigans that you can kind of do. Um, I went out and I did a little bit of net decking off of uh, Meta Duel to kind of get a feel for the deck, really see what ratios I did and didn't like. Uh, the only one I probably should adjust are my Thunder Dragon Matrices, because I've seen, I've had several occasions where I needed a third one, uh, but I wasn't really too sure about it. So yeah, the, the boards you typically go for, at least from what I could tell, is get a Colossus on the field, get a Titan on the field, it's very doable. Um, stop your opponent from basically adding any card from the deck to their hand, or, you know, any, any of those shenanigans. It's not hard to fuse with someone in this deck, but I've always been a big fan of chaos-based decks, decks that run the whole light and darkness mechanic or shenanigans. Um, and probably why well, I'm really a big fan of the Despia bit, or decks a little bit. I love the, what that deck kind of plays around, you know, light and dark monsters just doing a bunch of shenanigans together. So let's take a look at a few of the duels that I had, some misplayed duels, some of the duels with Ellen. Um, you know, these are all diamond games for the most part. It, it, Diamond's been pretty fun, minus the weird little burn decks that I've been running. All right, so the first duel is going to be against Live Twins. I, I, I've, I'm, this is literally probably the second time I've ever played this deck in game. Um, I have never played an IRL or against it personally, probably because I don't do a whole lot of IRL stuff right now. Uh, can't tell if the ratios are good for this or not, so somebody let me know. But um, Live Twins, I, I don't know what the deck does for the most part. I know they could do. I know they're more of a control deck control focused uh deck but um yeah so the one thing i noticed with diamond is it's a little bit more inconsistent with um with the type of decks you're gonna run into there's a lot of fun troll decks in this in this um in this ranking i guess it's so strange to me <laughs> just to see all the shenanigans basically that uh people have been playing with it, it, it's so strange it, going through platinum and gold there's so many consistent swords old decks so many consistent meta decks and i guess people are just trying to get out of those low rankings so they can get the diamond as fast as possible which makes sense um but again it, it's just it, it's insane how much of a difference there is really so thunder dragons the whole play that you just saw was basically chaos space into one of my wyvern dragon or, or white dragons or dark dragons uh, get striker dragon out basically long story short get into verte anaconda um we do get nibbed here and impermed on our dpe which sucks we're gonna get nibbed here it sucks but you know that's what happens when you overextend pretty much um i set a little bit of back row which is good i'm so happy i did that because he hit the wrong card but i'm stupid right here listen I, like i said i misplay right here i, I was thinking very incorrectly, I activated the Imperm to negate the Dagda, but you gotta remember, you activate a card effect, Dagda's gonna set Scythe. It was a stupid decision on my part. Should've waited until he did something, then I could've negated it. Luckily that Scythe doesn't play, or make a play whatsoever um, throughout this duel. Uh, I switched the token to attack mode, just troll a little bit here. <laughs> uh, but we're gonna make some IP Mask Arena plays, go into our uh, Nightmare Unicorn. And we're gonna use Nightmare Unicorn's effect to get rid of that Mabuska, which was basically stopping us from doing really anything. Luckily, we have a Thunder Dragon Fusion in our hand. We're able to go into Titan. Um, and things just, well, they just kind of work out here. We're able to go into our Axis Code Talker, get rid of the Adagna, but I think he surrenders before he, yeah, he surrenders before he can do anything. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't mean to activate the Imperm and trigger the Adagna. That was just stupid, you know. I was like, yeah, I can imperm it, but I, I clicked it way too quickly. I didn't, I didn't mean to. I was just, you know, I'm, I'm a little a bit of a dumbass sometimes. I'm a lovable dumbass. So this, this is a deck I hate it. I, this is literally the, I hate this deck more than anything. It's just Kaiju level eight spam. I, I, I literally cannot believe this is actually a deck that people are consistently playing. Cause I run into this deck probably three, four times, maybe not a big fan of it. So, um, this is one of the decks I took a loss against. I've run into this a couple of times, and again, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of the deck. It's not fun to play against. It's just literally level eight spam, pretty much. Um, but luckily, we do have our chaos space here. Now, what's funny is I <laughs> when he played the maxi, I didn't want to take the maxi challenge because I could have, but he would have ended like with six or seven cards, maybe. If I played around it a little bit more carefully, I probably could have got Titan out, and he wouldn't have been able to use any use any more of his cards. 
um or not titan i'm sorry colossus this was probably a stupid idea on my part i just didn't want to play it to the maxi challenge because i didn't know what he was playing if i knew what he was playing obviously i would have approached it a little bit differently i guess um but i just didn't want to i just didn't want to play into any of that it just wasn't it just i just didn't want him to have like eight cards in his hand by the time i got two colossus so we're going into some shenanigans making verte doing some things here and there um getting colossus out on the field and then i try to make unicorn to i believe bounce this but he has it he has an effect veiler which sucks <laughs> so in my head i'm thinking you know what Let's make access code talker. This is one of the areas where I misplayed and it had nothing really to do with the Thunder Dragons. But you got to remember access code talker. If you want to use its other effect to banish link monsters to pop things, they have to be at different attributes and all the link monsters in my graveyard are dark. So I activate access code and I'm just like, oh, oh, I actually can't do anything because I, I didn't read my card. I, please read your cards. And at this point, I just kind of gave up. It, it, there was nothing really I could do from this point on. I, I misplayed way too hard at that point. And at this point, I'm just trying to trigger Titan's effect to pop something, and I do manage to pop that Beast King that he had on the field. Then he goes for a Rochi, gets rid of more of my cards on the field. I just scoop. I, I misplayed. Yeah, read read your cards. I, I guess I didn't really misplay. There was, wasn't really too much I could do right there. I probably could have went to a different Wink Monster, but okay. So this opponent was playing. <laughs> He was playing Bad Reaction to Samachi Burn. You'll see how this one plays out. So, Bad Reaction to Samachi Burn. Uh, we're going to let this guy go ahead and just play out his entire turn. This duel is a little funny. This is one of the few duels I can just say it's good to have in the video because it's funny. But again, these are the bullshit kind of decks that I've been running into in the whole diamond area. Just uh, burn your opponent dot deck. Now, before we go forward, he activated this card. One day of peace. Each player draws one card and neither player takes damage until the end of the opponent's next turn. Remember that. And just watch. Okay? He's going to try to burn me for literally 9k. Activates the Samachi. Forgets that I can't take damage. <laughs> I start doing some shenanigans, a couple of combos, getting things out, and he scoops. If you're going to play this bullshit, read your cards. So, Thunder Dragon Mirror Match. Fun, right? I guess it's not a true mirror. I mean, it is, but it isn't. Our builds are significantly different. What's funny is, after playing this guy, I adopted a couple of the decisions he made in his deck that I actually liked, and it made my future games a little bit, well, you know, um, better, pretty much. So, going first again. Have a lot of going first duels here and there. Um, I brick basically. There's nothing I can really do here. This is literally just a hardcore brick. Uh, we get the max C out. He's gonna go into the whole destroyer, Phoenix Enforcer. Give me one extra draw into a Thunder Dragon Dark, which is exactly what I needed. Um, uh, it, it, it's a good card to have. I probably could have activated it right here, but again, uh, with the Aloof or Aloof Lupine, you know, we're gonna be able to do some more shenanigans, get some more searches out. Um, make a Nightmare Phoenix, actually, because I want to get rid of that back row. I don't, I don't like back row. I just didn't trust it. I'd rather get rid of it. And it was an Emperor. Very glad I went with that decision. Uh, he's going to unfortunately ash my Chaos Space, which is fine. We're able to still make our Colossus, pretty much. Now, my reminder, he does still have DPE on the field, which is a bit of a, you know, that's a, that's a problem. That's a bit of an annoying card. He unfortunately has Effect Veiler. Um, so... I ought to get rid of the Col the tight or the Colossus rather to try and bait out his DPE. I guess there was really no other option there because he was still going to destroy the Colossus either way. Um, but I figured maybe I could survive out the battle phase or him potentially blowing my cards up. I figured I could just wait it out, you know. Um, luckily, with him activating Thunder Dragon effects, I also get my Titans effects. Uh, but again, my whole philosophy here was I could just wait it out maybe. But unfortunately, he just, well, he just played better. He just had the better uh, field. He had a better lineup, honestly. And uh, yeah, he, he, he just, he had every piece of resource that he needed. 
And then he goes into the Unicorn. He's going to get rid of the Titan. That's pretty much it right there. Not too many options I had. <clears throat> Not too many options um, that I could make right there. Again, I figured, well, if I'm going to lose the... the <laughs> if I'm going to lose the Colossus, I might as well bait out something. And I... <laughs> Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot I could really do right there, unfortunately. For the last duel, well, I forgot to show you the profile at the very beginning, but it's another level eight spam deck. I'll show you the, the deck after the replay ends pretty much, but uh, we win this one. It's another level eight spam dot deck pretty much. So uh, tired of this. Um, yeah, luckily I decided to activate this allure because I had a feeling that if you saw me set to <clears throat> well, voice is cracked. But I had a feeling, you know, I set to and then activated a lure. I figured, well, he might think I brick, so he'll probably um just ash blossom whatever I draw pretty much. Um so I kept the call by in my hand. Luckily I drew two of them, best card in the game, and I was able to negate it pretty much. Uh but we do luckily draw into a Thunder Dragon Dark. And uh we're able to make quite a few plays off of here, basically go into the full combo of what I normally go for. Uh, the Striker Dragon uh, shenanigans, pretty much. And Chaos Space gets us back our Collapse Serpent, gets us a draw. We're able to make Verte. And then, uh, well, yeah, it, it just kind of plays out like this. We activate Thunder Dragon uh, Hawk's Effect just so we can meet the Claws to Summon Colossus, which requires you to have activated a, uh, a Thunder Dragon monster from your hand. Then he goes into Orochi. I go for DPE, pop his Orochi, get rid of my Verte, and uh, basically make it so he can't lightning storm me. He kaijus me, and I rage. I had a few choice words for this guy, but I was was not a happy camper. Um, he tries to Orochi, we use our second call by basically stop all of his shenanigans. Not a whole lot that he had left at this point. He had another Kaiju, another damn Kaiju. <laughs> um, yeah. We're able to use a uh, Celestial to get a double draw, basically our Pot of Greed right there. Um, at this point, I misplayed. I was trying to set up my grave for uh, for Axis Code Talker. Did way too much, didn't need to do all of what I had just did, but it was fine. We were still able to kind of recover from it, honestly. Again, too much, uh, put too much thought into my play, but it, it still worked itself out. Uh, either way, if I did have to go into Axis Code Talker, which I did, because he put a 7200 Grand Maja, Grand Maju on the field. I'm glad I still kind of went about it the way I did. Uh, our graveyard was pretty much set up with everything that we needed. He then summons Fairy Tale Luna, which has a bouncing effect. It's so annoying, but it won't matter in the end. I mean, we still have a bunch of plays effects we can activate from the graveyard. Pretty much, we have our Thunder Dragon Hawk in hand, and we still have a Chaos Space face down. So we we kind of go off here. Um, Lots of card effects are going to be activated in the span of the next like 30 seconds. But we're able to pretty much get all of our big beaters on the field for the most part. Um, get our Colossus back because we shuffled it into the deck to activate Thunder Dragon Fusion earlier. Then we're going to activate another Thunder Dragon Fusion, summon a Titan, and, uh, well, <laughs> as you can see, yeah, he scoops as soon as I activate the battle phase. Or as soon as I declare the battle phase. Level 8 Spam Banish Summon Grim Maju dot deck. I, I don't know what the hell to call this. There's so many hand traps. He's got what? Two, four, six, nine, uh, ten, I guess. Eleven. Eleven hand traps in this deck. Uh, Twelve. Twelve counting the dimension shifter. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, this, this is a deck I don't like playing a lot. Well, those are the Thunder Dragons. Uh, fun deck. I like this deck a lot. Like I said, I love the whole chaos aspect of it pretty much. Um, Gotta stop misplaying with it. Gotta stop misplaying with it, like, a lot. <laughs> We're getting better, though. Again, this is my first time ever really playing this deck. I gotta stop thinking way too hard in some of my plays. I pretty much say that every video, though. So, you might just get used to it at a certain point. I'll get better. I promise. Um, what's funny is, I've been using Instant Fusion for the Kaminari attack, and I never drew into it once. I also originally had a Battery Man card in here, but I wasn't too crazy about it. Um, so, I'm gonna try a few different builds of this over time. And uh, yeah, it, it's a fun deck though. I like it a lot, but uh, yeah, be sure to leave a like on the video, sub to the channel for more content. Uh, we'll do a few more videos on Thunder Dragons. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Have a good day, peace.